So, uh, some people call me crazy, but I'm gonna replace my cranks, even though these are perfectly fine. I'm gonna tell you guys why. I'm also gonna tell you what to pay attention for if you're gonna buy some new cranks and how best to replace them. Cranks, this is a crank arm, that's the axle. They come in a bunch of different sizes. Generally, the most common sizes would be 22 and 19 millimeters. And when I say that, I mean the diameter of the axle. For BMX cranks, most of the time it's either 19 or 22. Sometimes you'll see 24. It doesn't really matter if you have 19 or 22 or 24. The only thing that actually changes is the bearing size that goes in your bike. Another thing you need to pay attention for is these little holes here. That's where your sprocket bolt goes. Some cranks, they'll have their sprocket bolt holes on either the left, the right, or on both sides. Or none at all. This crank has them on both sides. I won't be needing them though because my sprocket doesn't need the bolt, but that's something you want to pay attention to. So if your sprocket is on the right side, you want to make sure it has a bolt on the right side. And don't think, well, if it has one on the left side, just spin it over. That doesn't work. The um, crank arms are directional, so there's a, there's a left and the right side. Another thing you need to pay attention to, and that only comes down to preference, is the length of the arm. Most common in BMX would be 175 millimeters. I changed it up a little bit. I have 170. Again, it doesn't really matter what size cranks you have. It just really comes down to preference. I like it a little bit shorter. Some people like it a lot shorter. Another little detail is crank designs. If you buy an aftermarket crank for your BMX, it will probably be either two or three piece. Three piece being the most common one. If you look at this, you pretty much know what the two piece stands for. This is a crank arm and an axle, but it's one solid piece. This being the second piece. The three piece crank will have the axle separate to the arms. Again, it doesn't really matter which design you have. I just like, I just like this one. Tool wise, you don't need a lot. I have a spanner to take off my pedals, an Allen key to take off my cranks, and if something's stuck, I use a hammer. I do use the rubber side though, or the plastic side in this case. Yeah, you don't want to damage your cranks. So uh, this is all I need. The cranks come with grease, so um, you're gonna need grease. First, you're gonna need to remove the pedals. I already loosened mine. Second, you loosen your cranks. Now, every cranks have different systems. If your cranks have a single bolt, like this two-piece design, it's easy. Some cranks still have pinch bolts, so you have to loosen those before you take out that bolt. And if you have a three-piece design, you'll have a bolt on the other side as well. I recommend just doing one side so you can slide the whole thing out together. So in my case, I could just slide the crank right off. Now, you'll see my sprocket is still attached to my axle. In this case, I have a spline drive, so I could just slide this off. But you'll see on this side, there's a spacer that had my sprocket up against it, and on this side, there's a spacer. This spacer is there because you want your chain to be in a straight line, and this spacer is to space out the crank. If you're going to replace your cranks for the same cranks, make sure you check the spacers and just space them the same. But if you're going to do different cranks and they might have a different they might have a different axle size, you want this gap to be the same on both sides and you want your sprocket and your chain in a straight line. You can either add or take away spacers or add and take away spacers there. I'm replacing my cranks for exactly the same cranks so I don't have to mess with the spacers. If you tend to forget where the spacers go, just make a picture of it and then you can always see afterwards. But when you have the cranks out, you want to check the bearings, if there's any play in the bearings or any tight spots when you spin. If so, you might want to replace them before you put in your new cranks. Just clean up all the old grease, any dirt, anything grimy left in between. Grab your new cranks, make sure you remember this is the right side, so the right side goes in the right side. It's going to be confusing when you have a three-piece design, so make sure you pay attention where what goes. Put your spacers back on. This is a step I find very important. Everything metal to metal, 
put some grease on it. Slide the spacer back. I personally run a spline drive. Spline drive means I don't need a sprocket bolt. If you had to ask me what is better, a spline drive or a normal sprocket, these boys are a lot superior. You should be able to slide the sprocket back on before you put the crank arm back. Make sure you add some grease to that too. And now you should be able to slide the crank arm back on. As you see, it doesn't really go that easy. You can do two things. You can either hit it on, or some brands give you a crank tool. To line up the crank arms, I always take the seat tube as a reference. Take your distance, look at it, make sure it's straight. As a last step, grease up the bolt. In this case, it's just one bolt. If you have a three-piece crank, you grease up both. And then you tighten the crank down. Next step would to be put your pedals back in your cranks. Make sure your pedals have a little bit of grease on them as well. The left goes in the left. And the right pedal goes in the right. Yeah, I know, I still need to do the chain, but I didn't bring the tools down here to loosen up my back wheel, so I'll do that in a minute. For those of you wondering why I've replaced my crank, because the old one was perfectly fine, it's due to the age of the crank. I believe that if you ride something hard, even though it hasn't broken yet, the longer you ride something, the higher the chance something might break. So if you guys have any other suggestions about how-to videos or any questions or anything, leave me a comment down below. Please give me a thumbs up because it really, really helps these videos. And... I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.